We had spent most of the day before at the beach, after I'd finished unpacking. I had found my sunglasses, and even though it was too cold to swim, I had a great time just lying on the blanket on the beach, watching the waves. They were huge, bigger than on Baywatch, and Doc spent most of the afternoon explaining to me why that was. I forget now, since I was so drugged by the sun, I was hardly even listening. I found that I loved the beach, the smell of it, the seaweed that washed up on the shore, the feel of the cool sand between my toes, the taste of the salt in my skin when I got home. Carmel might not have had a bagel bobs, but Manhattan sure didn't have no beach. Father Dominic expressed his sincere hope that I'd be happy at the Mission Academy, and went on to explain that even though I wasn't Catholic, I shouldn't feel unwelcome at Mass. There were, of course, holy days of obligation, when the Catholic students would be required to leave their lessons behind and go to church. I could either join them or stay behind in the empty classroom, whatever I chose. I thought this was kind of funny, for some reason, but I managed to keep from laughing. Father Dominic was old, but what you'd probably call spry, and he struck me as sort of handsome in his white collar and black robes. I mean, handsome for a 60-year-old. He had white hair and very blue eyes, and well-maintained fingernails. I don't know many priests, but I thought this one might be all right, especially since he hadn't come down hard on the boy in the outer office, who'd call that nun abroad. After Father Dominic had described the various offenses I could get expelled for, skipping class too many times, dealing drugs on campus, the usual stuff, he asked me if I had any questions. I didn't. Then he asked my mother if she had any questions. She didn't. So then Father Dominic stood up and said, I'll say goodbye to you, Mrs. Ackerman, and walk Susanna to her first class. All right, Susanna? I thought it was kind of weird that the principal, who probably had a lot to do, was taking time to walk me to my first class, but I didn't say anything about it. I just picked up my coat, a black wool trench from East Spirit, Trey Chic. My mom wouldn't let me wear leather on my first day of school. And waited while he and my mother shook hands. My mom kissed me goodbye and reminded me to find Sleepy at 3 o'clock, since he was in charge of driving me home. Only she didn't call him sleepy. Once again, a woeful lack of public transportation meant that I had to bum rides to and from school with my stepbrothers. Then she was gone, and Father Dominic was walking me across the courtyard after having instructed Adam to wait for him. No prop, Padre, was Adam's response. He leered at me behind the father's back. It isn't often I get leered at by boys my own age. I hoped he was in my class. My mother's wishes for my social life just might be realized at last. As we walked, Father Dominic explained a little about the building, or buildings, I should say, since that's what they were. A series of thick-walled adobe structures were connected by low-ceiling breezeways, in the middle of which existed the beautiful courtyard that came complete with palm trees, bubbling fountain, and a bronze statue of Father Sarah, with these women, who were stereotypical Indian squaws, complete with papooses strapped to their backs kneeling at his feet. On the other side of the breezeway were stone benches for people to sit on while they enjoyed solitary contemplation of the courtyard's splendor. The doors to the classrooms and steel lockers were built right into the adobe wall. One of those lockers, Father Dominic explained to me, was mine. He had the combination with him. Did I want to put away my coat? I had been surprised when I'd awakened Sunday morning to find myself shivering in bed. A thick fog I saw with dismay had enshrouded the valley, obscuring my view of the bay. I thought for sure some horrible tropical storm had rolled in, but Doc had explained to me, quite patiently, that morning fog was typical in the northwest, and that the Pacifico, Spanish for passive, was so named because of its relative lack of storms. The fog, Doc assured me, would burn off by noon, and it would then be just as hot as it had been the day before. And he'd been right. By the time I returned home from the beach, sunburned and happy, my room had become an oven again, and I pried the windows back open, only to find that they'd been gently shut again when I woke up this morning, which I thought was sweet of my mom, looking out for me like that. Now that I think about it... <laughs> but no, I hadn't seen Jessie since that first day I moved in. It definitely had been my mom who'd shut my windows. Anyway, when I'd walked outside to get into my mom's car, I found that it was freezing out again, and that was why I was wearing the wool coat. Father Dominic told me that my locker was number 273, and he seemed content to let me find it myself, strolling behind me with his eyes on the breezeway's rafters, in which, much to his professed delight, families of swallows nested every year. He was apparently quite fond of the birds, of all animals, actually, 
since one of the questions he'd asked me was how I was getting along with Max, the Ackerman's dog, and openly scoffed at Andy's repeated assurances that the timber in the breezeways was going to have to be replaced thanks to the swallows and their refuse. 268, 269, 270. I strolled down the open corridor, watching the numbers on the beige locker doors. Unlike the ones in my school back in Brooklyn, these lockers were not graffitied, or dented, or plastered with stickers from heavy metal bands. I guess students from the West Coast took more pride in their school's appearance than us Yankees. 271, 272. I stumbled to a halt. In front of locker number 273 stood a ghost. It wasn't Jessie either. It was a girl, dressed very much like I was, only with long blonde hair instead of brown like mine. She also had an extremely unpleasant look on her face. What, she said, are you looking at? Then, speaking to someone behind me, she demanded, This is who they let take my place? I am so sure. Okay, I admit it. I freaked out. I spun around and found myself gaping up at Father Dominic, who was squinting down at me curiously. Ah, he said, when he saw my face. I thought so.